Hi there, welcome to the YouTube channel for the last deck of the week. Um, today, going back to Outlaws of Thunder Junction because Uma, Prior Protector, has actually gone down in price significantly on MTGO, so I've picked one up and I've built my variation of the um, pre con deck that came along with that Uma was in. So, for those of you who haven't seen Uma before, five red, green, and white for a 6 6 human ranger, legendary creature. Costs one less to cast for each land in our graveyard. And when Uma enters, we can sack a land, or attack, sorry. Um, enters or act, attacks, we can sack a land if we do draw a card. And then whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, um, we get a 4-2 green plant warrior creature token with reach. Not quite sure what has reach, but well, I suppose plants grow upwards, don't they? So reach makes sense. So um, today's deck is a bit of an unusual one for me because it's very heavy in lands and the support cards are all around about the lands more than anything else so here we go this is what today's deck looks like so uh, here we go start at the beginning um birds of paradise gives a bit of ramp gold vein hydra i'm becoming not sure it should be in this deck but i'm enjoying playing at the moment so vigilance tramp and haste comes in with x plus one plus one counters when it dies you get that many ta treasure tokens Lotus Cobra's here because we're playing so many lands it makes sense to have this in to ramp with. Course for a crew fix lets us just play a lands off top of our library and gain some life. June Chanter was in the Precon deck itself and I've grabbed it to put in here. Um, it's a free mana 2-3 with a reach. Lands and land cards you own that aren't on the battlefields are deserts. Lands you control have tap, add one mana of any colour. And then you can mill two cards and gain a life for each land mill this way. It's a pretty solid creature. I would expect to see this turning up a lot in future green decks from everyone because of how good it is, especially five color decks. Obviously, for, that was a stupid comment, but yeah, very good. <laughs> um, Hazion, Shaper of the Sand, comes in as well. Um, green, white, and green, white, and red. I'll get there for a 3-3. Three, three. Um, and whenever it does, enters the battlefield under our control, we get a 1-2, one, 1-1 one, one Sand Warrior tokens that are red, green, and white creatures. Keeping on theme with the original version of Hazion, who's a little bit further down. Nissa, Resurgent Animus, we might as well try and get some extra mana on the go, a bit like Lotus Cobra. Um, there's a few elementals, there's one or two other elves we can get in as well, so we may get the second trigger as well. But the extra mana is always helpful. Six is here, um, two, four, reach. Um, Whenever a six attacks, mill three cards. You may put a land card from among them onto, into your hand. And as long as it's your turn, non-land permanent cards in your graveyard have retrace. Great way of getting your deserts into the graveyard with retrace and getting a 4-2 creature when you do that. Because don't forget, Yuma says whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from anywhere. That includes your hand. Tireless Tracker, get the clues, we drew the land drops. We've got a little bit of landfall, not too much. Um, Titania, Voice of Gaia is here as well. Whenever we're more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain some life. And we have the other half to do the meld as well, further down. Turn Timber Sower is also here. Whenever one more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you get a plant token. Again, this is another card from the pre-con that I've included. So this is kind of it's not really the pre-con upgrade, it just grabs some of the good cards from it. And then we can sacrifice three creatures and return a land card from our graveyard to our hand. That's okay. Blood Braid Elf, a little bit of Cascade fun. Um, Colossal Rattle Worm. Comes in from... Oh, it's gone again, there you go. Outlaws of... No, it's not Outlaws of Thunder Junction, is it? Yeah, it might be. Might be. Yeah, yeah, it is Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Sorry. Um, has flashes off. You've got Desert. It's a trample. It's got 6 5 for 4 mana. And then we can exile it from our graveyard. Search our library for a desert and put it onto battlefield tapped. Lovely. Kiri, Talented Sprout. I covered it in a video a long time ago. Um, because this was cheap compared to Uma. But obviously, if Uma's here, we might also have Kiri here. Because obviously, he's holding Kiri in the picture. So, yay. We're making plants and tree folks. So, you know, that's cool. Um, Rampant Rejuvenator helps us get some basics into play when it dies. That's fine, cope with that plan. Strider pops over from Lord of the Rings land to give all our creatures with power 4 greater plus 1 plus 1 on first strike. Well, give them plus 1 plus 1, then if they're 4 greater, get your first strike as well. Um, so that's pretty useful. Blood Braid Challenger is a bigger version of the Blood Braid Elf. 5 mana, Cascade, Haste, and it also has Escape. 
um, which makes it that much better because you can pay three grid and green and exile three other cards from our graveyard, bring it back, cast it again, get that cascade trigger and hopefully hit something good again. Um, yep, red deck, bone hall dracosaurs here, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no um, pirate guy, dockside extortionist in this one, but the bone hall dracosaur is here to make up for it. Perennial Behemoth lets us play our lands from our graveyard. Titania, Protectorate of Agroth, um, return target land card from our graveyard to the battlefield. And when a land goes into the graveyard, we get a 5 3 elemental green creature token, so that's nice. Ancient Green Warden lets us also play the lands from our graveyard. And lands entering do a double trigger. That's cool. Annie Flash, the veteran, it comes into the Outlaws of Thunder Junction to return permanent cards, mana value for three or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. It includes lands because their mana value is zero. Um, and then we become tapped, we get to exile the top two cards and play them this turn if we need to. Pyleth comes in, we get a 1-0-1 one, one green plant creature token for each basic land. Um, that's fine, but they're plant tokens, and then landfall makes those plants bigger. Obviously, they're going to be bigger anyway with Kiri around, so we're not going to complain too much. Rampaging Baloths had to be here, a little bit of landfall triggers, um, get the beasts when we drop the lands. Spinewoods Armadillo, also from Thunder Outlaw Thunder Junction. Reach Ward 3, discard it, search your land, um, search your library for a basic land or desert card, reveal it, pit in our hand, then shuffle to gain 3 life. So this is more ramp, um, like rampant growth that lets us go and get desert. Cope with that. Sun Titan makes an appearance to bring everything back from our graveyard when it comes into play and attacks. Um, Titania, Nature's Falls, you can play the forest from our graveyard. Forest enters the battlefield, we get 5 3 elemental, and whenever an elemental you control dies, we may mill 3. Okay. The usual version of land four triggers are here. Avenger of Zendikar just gets us a 0 1 plant creature for each tote land we control, and then they get bigger when we drop lands. Cultivator Colossus is equal. Power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, and then enter the battlefield to get a land from our hand onto the battlefield tapped. Mm. If we do, we draw a card and repeat the process. We should be able to do that a couple of times, I reckon, with the amount of lands we've got. You'll see why in a minute. The original Hazion Tamir is here. Um, have to be a little bit careful with this one because this will exile all of the Sand Warrior tokens, not just the one he creates when he comes into play. So be careful if you've got this in your hand. But I figured if we're going to play around with deserts, we might have the original one as well. Omnath Locus of Rage just gives us big elementals for the landfall triggers. And then I couldn't resist not having Apex Devastator in the deck. I know people don't always like seeing it, but I like having Apex Devastator around. It's fun. Um, another card I've nicked from the actual pre-con deck, Cataclysmic Prospecting, um, deals X damage to each creature, and for each mana from the desert spent this way, we get a treasure token. Tapped, but we get a treasure token, so yeah, like that one. Especially gives it kind of gives us a way of clearing the board out. Nature's Law, Rampant Growth, three visits, Sky Shroud Claim, gives us all our ramp we need. Wrath of God and Blasphemous Act gives us a bit more control. Not too many artifacts. Um, Sol Ring, Arcane Signet, one of each of the respective coloured medallions to help us get the ramp on. Thought Vessels, we don't have to discard anything if we start getting stuck. We shouldn't do with the amount of land, but just in case. And then Crucible and Worlds and Conduit Worlds, we can play things from our graveyard. And then obviously the Conduit's got the backup thing of playing non-land permanents if we need to. Five enchantments. Um, Spelunking, so all our lands into the battlefield untapped. I thought that could be useful. Um, Desert Warfare, whenever you sacrifice a desert and whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from your hand or library, put that card onto the battlefield under your control at the beginning of your next end step. Okay then. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if we've got five more deserts, create that many 1-1 one, one red, green and white sand warrior creature tokens. They gain haste. Yeah, okay then. That's pretty good enchantment, like this one. Right, Mending and Dominaria is also here, so eventually we get this to trigger off at stage so we can get all of our lands back into play. Zendikas Royal gives us a whole load of 2-2 elementals when we do the landfall triggers, and then Waking the Trolls. Blow up other people's lands, get lands from our graveyard back onto the play, and then hopefully get a few 4-4 green troll warrior creature tokens out of it as well. Now, I did say we were playing a lot of lands. We are playing 47. Um... <laughs> That is a lot, obviously. I usually have this 10 more than I usually have in any of my commander decks, but where Yuma is so keen on lands, I figured it was worth going all out on it, and I have done. Um, 
so abraded bluffs rk Argrove sanctums here so we can do the gay incarnate if we need to got quite a few search lines there with mesa beautiful promenade bristling back waters so all of the new deserts that come in and deal damage from opponent are in um along with a few other ones like the butelic ranch we can't use you know it's just a desert for this case cactus preserve etc etc i'm not going to go through them all you can look in the deck list down below i have included the cyclers they are all here um just so we can do a little bit of cycling if we need to um somewhere down here is there you yeah, feel Field of the Dead's coming. We've got so many different land types. So you're getting this up to seven different ones. We can get some zombies every time we play something. Should be straightforward. Um, we only have a few basics. We have two forests, two mountains, two plains. Feel free to change that round if you wish to. And then we do have Relic We Tower in case things go wrong. We don't. We do have Temple of the False God and Yavimaya Cradle of Growth just to make sure we've got that. But there's a lot of sack lands um, to go and search things out with. So feel free to adjust it as you will. This worked well for me. Um, I have to say, I've been quite impressed with how well this has worked with this build at the moment with this many lands in it. So that's it. That's my completely different take on Uma, the Proud Protector. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you think there's anything major I've missed out, let me know down below. Um, Ramanap Excavator probably should be in the deck as well, but I was trying to avoid it and play some other type of we bring lands back from the graveyards being put it in. Um, I have thought of that card, sorry. But anything else, let me know in the comments down below. Please hit the subscribe button. Help me get a little bit closer to 500 if you can. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll be back next week. Um, maybe with a couple of Assassin's Creed. Maybe with a couple of looks forward to Bloomborough. Since we start to see quite a few of the spoilers as I record this one. But for now, thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next week. Come and see me on the stream. Sorry, down below Twitch. Come watch me play some of these decks. It's fun. Okay, see you later. Bye.